the obesity epidemic has really become a very pressing problem uh, in the United States and actually worldwide. And here in the U.S., two in three adults are now overweight and one in three are obese. And among children and adolescents, one in three are overweight. So these are very large numbers. And there are some serious public health consequences of this. Being overweight and obese puts you at much higher risk for things like ca several cancers, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and also things like asthma and arthritis, actually. Uh, so in addition to these public health consequences, there are some real economic costs associated with uh, overweight and obesity. In particular, uh, medical spending is much higher among the overweight and the obese. Some estimates say as much as 100% higher. And so that adds up to quite a bit in medical spending. And again, by most estimates, at least 21% of US medical spending is driven by obesity already. Uh, that number could easily go up. So that's some of the economic side of it. I think the main thing to, to think about is how important prevention is with obesity in particular because once obesity exists, there are some very powerful physiological processes and behavior patterns that are very entrenched and they, it's quite difficult to reverse. And this is the reason why the majority of overweight and obese children go on to be overweight and obese adults. So prevention, particularly early prevention, is really important. I think that's the, the fundamental focus. Uh, unfortunately, prevention is also hard. Obesity is a very complex syndrome that is dr driven by many, many different factors. In one sense, it's extremely simple because it's about energy balance, energy in and energy out. If you take more energy in than you have energy out, you'll gain weight. It's as simple as that. But on the other hand, it's quite complex because the drivers of what you eat and how much physical activity you get and what your resting metabolic rate are, are quite complicated and involve biology and physiology and genetics, but also advertising and marketing and social norms and our agricultural system of production and distribution and the physical environment around us where we live and how our, how our world is structured. And all of those things work together to produce different outcomes. And that's, that uh, linkage between these different factors is less well understood and is actually very important for trying to do policy in this space. I think uh, there's a growing consensus that what we need to do to do a better job of preventing obesity is to coordinate activity across different sectors and different levels of scale. So to take what's called a systems approach. And a systems approach means that you try to coordinate what's going on in education, in schools, what's going on in transportation and urban planning, what's going on in agriculture, because really all of these things are linked together and they all drive health outcomes and obesity in particular. And they tend to be addressed from a policy perspective and from a science perspective separately. But really connecting what we're doing in a coordinated, cohesive way is extremely important for making progress on this issue. And some of the modeling work that we do at the Center on Social Dynamics and Policy here at Brookings is helping to explore these complex linkages, both across sectors, so what's happening in the private sector and the public sector, but also what's happening at different levels, at the federal level, the state level, the community level, and the household level. And finally, these connections between the biology physiology, what's happening inside uh, people, what's happening in their brains uh, as they eat food and uh, observe advertising, and what's happening around them, their physical environment, their social environment, all of those are connected. And models can help us to understand how they work together and how to design policies that work together to address it more holistically. There are definitely barriers in the way. There are at least three sets of barriers. One set of barriers is institutional. On the policy side, we have different departments of government uh, for public health and for the things that actually drive public health uh, as well, like education and transportation and agriculture. Uh, and they aren't necessarily used to working together, but they really need to to address this problem. The second set of, of hurdles is, is on the scientific side. Uh, we have different fields of science. We have genetics, we have nutrition, we have uh, business, and they don't usually talk to each other or work together either, and they also need to to help us understand this problem. And the third set of challenges is really methodological. We don't have tools 
that are good at this amount of complexity and at helping us to manage it and design effective policies. And these new tools that have arisen to address this challenge are what we really specialize in here at the center and are helping the federal government and the scientific community to apply to the obesity epidemic. So in the international context, the picture looks in some ways very different from the, the United States context. In fact, a lot of uh, uh, obesity is, is occurring in the developing world. Uh, two in three overweight people in the world are in developing countries, not in the developed world, which is a surprising statistic. In the developing world, everything is changing very rapidly. Their systems of growing and producing and distributing food are changing very rapidly as they develop. Their social norms and tastes are developing very rapidly. And what you find in devel many developing countries is uh, at the same time, an, a, a, a lingering epidemic of malnutrition, widespread malnutrition, and a new obesity epidemic, which is getting quite bad. And they coexist, sometimes even in the same village, uh, and even in the same household. And that is uh, a little bit of a puzzle, but I think it's because both things are driven by the same fundamental underlying systems that affect nutrition. Malnutrition and overnutrition, which is what leads to obesity, are really part of the same problem. And one of the challenges for developing countries will be to solve their malnutrition crisis without creating an obesity epidemic. And that's very challenging to do, and it involves coordination between the agriculture sector and our understandings of environment and health and how the three are actually uh, all working together to produce one or the other of these effects or sometimes both at the same time.